All right, so our last video for chapter two, uh, we're going to look at name constants. Uh, we'll talk just briefly about programming style, and then uh, we'll do a couple review problems. So uh, then that'll, that'll be it. All right, so let's look at name constants real quick. So in section 2.16, uh, it kind of talks about this a little bit. We're really talking about a constant variable, uh, meaning you can't change the content of that variable during the program's execution. So uh, usually we'll see, and of course remember using descriptive names, uh, usually you'll see it written like this. Now I know this is in the naming convention we've been using, but for constants, this is what you want to do, all caps with an underscore, that's what these are, the little uh, underline, in between. Okay, so uh, sales tax rate. And you see something like here, uh, number of states. So things that are not going to change once we are running the program. So number of states, not going to change, right? Sales tax rate, if we want to change that, we can change it in one spot in the code. And so what, what you'll have is if you refer to this variable, uh, you know, a bunch of different times throughout, you know, 500 lines of code, uh, not that big a deal. You just go back and uh, at the at the top the code where you've uh, set this up and set this rate up and uh, initialize it where we can change it here so let's say the sales tax rate goes up we can change it in here in one spot in the code and then the variable will adjust that right so we're using a constant uh, variable so that you know that you can't mess with it and change it someplace in the program right so use all caps underscore in between it doesn't have to be in all caps in uh, in C++ but it's a it's just a good uh, a programming style to uh, to go ahead and do that all right so you've got constant at the beginning uh, the type of variable and then you'll see all caps here all right so please use uppercase letter for those um, let's see let's take a look at a couple here just real quick uh, so here's some constants in here uh, we've got our little uh, const double and then pi, so 3.14159, and that's good enough for us for now, I guess. Uh, and then the same thing here for this double called diameter, and so the diameter is 10.0, obviously double, and it is a constant, so diameter is not going to change. So when you refer to diameter, this is it. So if you need to come back and change it, you can come back to this spot in the code, and it's set up as a constant, all right? So um, that's pretty much it uh, for, for constants, at least for now. So just briefly about uh, programming style, and the book talks a little bit more about it in, in the next section in 2.17, but uh, what we're talking about is just making sure that it's easy for us to read. The, the computer doesn't care. As long as you're doing things correctly, it doesn't care. It's, all this white space just goes away anyway. Uh, but what, we, what we're talking about is things like making sure your curly braces match up so it's easier to identify. And right now we only have these two right but uh, within a couple of chapters we'll have a bunch and we'll have you know we can have nested ifs we can have all sorts of different things that will loops that we'll play with that'll have a bunch of different ones all right but you notice also like the comments above uh, each section is saying what they are uh you know a space in between uh, all the indents are, are done the same and just making it so it's easy to follow the code easy to read and, and all that stuff so uh, basic programming style again using descriptive variable names for your variables so that it makes it easy to go in and go okay that's what that variable you know does so you don't want to have a bunch if you have three different variables don't use x y and z or a b c make sure they're descriptive all right so even though we'll do that in a second you'll see one of the programs we're going to do uh from chapter one but anyway so let's go ahead and go down real quick and um i want to take a look at this because i feel like we need a like a good mod practice and I think this is, this is actually from the book I think but um, so if we were to, to have this particular program so our pro problem statement so we have write a program that converts 125 seconds into uh, minutes and seconds with the following output so you want to come up with a sentence that says this okay so 125 seconds is equivalent to two minutes and five seconds so here's a little start here so using the mod remember this percent uh, you know you use it just like you so you use it a divide or you could use a mod you know those kind of things so uh, it's just another math operator uh, so go ahead and see if you can do that real quick pause the video and then uh, come back and we'll take a look at the code Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to go ahead and do that. Uh, if you look at the next slide, you'll see I put a live link in here too, so you can check that out and see how it runs. In fact, we'll go ahead and go over there. Uh, but but here's what you're going to do. Now, this is an easy way of doing it. Uh, we will have the same type of a problem where you'll take an input from the user and then you have to convert it, and you may have to do a little bit differently that. And, but uh, but that's okay. We'll we'll mess around with that. Uh, so you can see here minutes. So here's our um, int for minutes, and we've got 
total sex divided by 60. And you can see the same thing because it's going to give us our integer, our whole number answer to that. And then we're going to define seconds also as an integer. And we're going to say, okay, total seconds mod 60. In other words, what is the remainder of 60? And you can see here, you can either have a space or not have a space in between these. It really doesn't matter. I think this is a little bit easier to read when you use the spaces around the math operators, but that's the way it goes. And then, of course, the output statement. So if we take a look at this and just run it just really quickly, um, here's, the, here's the code here. And if I hit visualize execution, you'll see here in a second. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to roll this up a little bit so you can see the forward button. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to say forward, and you can see total seconds. Here's our end here, 125. And then we have minutes. We have two. So truncating it, meaning the, the uh, you know, dot, whatever it might be here, is gone. Uh, so we don't care. We, it doesn't round up. Just chops it off. That's uh, truncation. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and do the next one. And so for seconds, we have uh, five seconds was our remainder. So that's stored in there too. And important to remember for integers, uh, you have to use an integer with mod. If you use a double, you will get an error. And then it'll print out our sentence over here and we'll be good to go. All right, so that's so that's that one. Okay, one more just really quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I just wanted to show you, this, is a, this was pseudocode that we looked at from chapter one. And uh, I just wanted to show you how you would end up coding it, okay? So if you take a look at this, uh, we've got the you know the little problem in here, and so here's our little problem statement. Again, non-descriptive uh, variable names here. But again, we were chapter one. We were just getting into this, all right. So I left this exactly the same as uh, the, the little pseudocode problem was from that. And then um, go ahead and pause the video. See if you could code this and get the right response in uh, Python Tutor. Okay, so let's take a look. The answer you should have gotten, hopefully, uh, would be 28. Okay, so let's take a look at the code for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go over here, over this little baby right here. So here's our code. So we've uh, defined just ints real quick. Uh, so JKM, here we go. And the this is what uh, the problem statement asked us to do. And then finally, output K. So if we run this, you'll see it calculate these things. I'll have to scroll up a little bit. There we go. So here's our output window. And I'm going to say forward. Boom. They're all set up in here. All initialized. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, uh, this is what I want to do. J equals this. So then you'll see the numbers start to change over here. Uh, notice that. Let me drop that back. Okay. So boom. Here's 10 right here. But it's going to go ahead and say, okay, nope, that's 20. M now becomes 8. K becomes 28. And here's our output of 28 there. All right, so um, just a couple review things. I just wanted to do the mod one real quick, and then uh, just to show you this from from uh, chapter one, so you can see our little pseudocode example and actually how it would be coded. All right, so that's it.